hey, thanks for watching. So now I'm going to walk through the pad layout uh, on both controllers and then show you a really good exercise that's basic but very powerful in going to build your chops and get you a good fundamental uh, and foundation on this style of finger drumming. So let's look at the pad layout. Uh, I got a sample from YouTube and it's from a record Wolfgang Krafer, sorry, Wolfgang Kafer night feel. And here's how the original sample sounds. Awesome. And when I heard this, I was instantly inspired and definitely wanted to chop it up. So I chopped it up and slowed the sample down a little bit. And it's rooted in this E flat minor chord. Uh, which I really play a lot in this. Uh, so this whole green section, yep, uh, are sample chops from that sample. Uh, the blue are these melodic effects. This is a little vocal, a sweep, two glitch sounds. And the top are trumpets, a muted trumpet, and some saxophones. I don't use the saxophones that much. Um, on the uh, middle column here, are this like upward building looking thing. Uh, we've got this salmon color, which is the drums, the vocals, shouts, and the claps. So. so that's the push layout. Uh, it's very highly experimental and changes all the time. Um, for the uh, machine, which I do in the drums, it's a little more... Uh, uh, consistent definitely on this bottom row it's always my kick my in this case rim again uh, snare or clap pad two and then hi-hat uh, on three six and eight so I can do this split hand technique which we'll talk about uh, in later videos but this video we're going to really cover the fundamentals of playing the drums here with uh, your dominant hand the purple pads are my 808s tuned to the pad, uh, chops That they're matching. Uh, and then I've got some percussion, some conga flams, bonga flams, and some metallic shakers. Uh, and one nice thing, I've got these two toms that are actually the same sample and transposed differently. So I can kind of try to experiment with that. Uh, this is my new endeavor. Uh, so let's talk about this exercise. Uh, you're gonna use your dominant hand and you don't need both controllers. You need just one controller. You can use any controller. Um, you can use an Akai, uh, MPC, uh, Novation like launch uh, uh, pad. Uh, and you're gonna take your dominant hand and it's all, we're gonna break it down into this like consistent motion uh, known as eighth notes. And all you have to do is be able to count to four. So I think we can all do this. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and use your ring finger on your dominant hand and kind of take it out, relax your hand, but kind of like tilt it in a little bit so it's ready to play. And you're gonna hover it over your hi-hat pad. And I'm gonna use a lot of wrist motion in this, which is gonna be important because that's how we're gonna play the other notes as well. Um, and we're gonna count to four. But we're gonna. There's one catch. We're gonna divide the four into each, uh, each beat into two beats, and we're gonna count to four. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. So that's pretty easy. And then we're gonna count. We're gonna use. And you, there's other syllables you can use, but we're gonna use and. It's like flashback to middle school band days. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and and we're gonna do that uh let's try a little faster one and two and three and four and one and two and check my gopro 
Still recording? Good. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. All right, so now we're gonna try to put the rim on three. One and two and three and four and, or the snare or clap. One and two, three and the backbeat. One and two and three and four and one and two and three. And definitely would practice this with a metronome. I'm gonna do a lot of different tempos. That's why I'm not doing it with a metronome right now. And four and one and two and three and four and one and two. So you're essentially just dropping in that middle finger on three, th B3. All right, so that's where it's pretty easy. Uh, we can make this challenging by doing it faster. So if that was too easy, you can tr always try to go a little faster. Always break it down slow though. Uh, so faster, one and two and three and four and one and two. Four and one and two and three and four. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. So faster and longer. So if I try to do that for five minutes straight, my hand, yeah, it would be breaking down. Uh, and that's actually how you build chops and are able to play faster in the long term. So it is good to do that. It's like an exercise. Um, so now let's add in the kick on beat one. So we've got one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one two and three and four and one and two good three and four one and two and three now if this is hard i would break it down into there's three components now two components at a time and that's how you're always going to learn these intense patterns is breaking them out down into individual components. So let's do, we already did the first two, that was pretty easy. Let's try just the kick and the hat. I bet that's the next thing that'll be most useful for us. So let's go one and two and three and four and one and, and just really make that comfortable. Four and one, three and four and one and two and three and four and one. And then you could, you know, we could break it down. I don't know if this will be as good because it doesn't have the same hand movement, but we could go one and two and three and four and one and two. So at least we kind of really and understand the concept of the rhythm. Three, four, one and two and three. Cool. So on the left hand uh, or your non-dominant hand, uh, you're going to, again, we could do it on one controller. We're going to try to do it on the one, two, three, four. So at least we just have some independence going and, uh, two things going at once, the drums and the other thing. Uh, I'm going to do this on this pad, two, three, or I can do it here. So I'll do here first on the pad and we're going to go again. Well, let's do just the first two components, one and two and three and four. So that was the first thing we did, plus this pad. Four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. And if you get the kick in, two and three and four and one and two. If you go slower, one. Or faster. Whoop. Not used to the microphone there. I'll just do that for a while. Uh, until your hand tires out and then take a quick break, reapproach it. Um, and that should be a really good basic exercise. You don't need the, necessarily the controllers on you. You can do this on a desk, on a, you know, on your uh, lap. Uh, you know, my emphasis is that this should be like, an, uh, like in your muscle memory, completely in your muscle memory, like any other instrument. And I think uh, if you use this exercise, you can really get some good fundamentals. So. Hopefully you learned something in this video. Thanks for watching. If you do like what you're seeing, please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time. Bye.